In New Zealand, at least five people have been killed in a volcanic eruption on White Island, a popular tourist destination. Around 50 people are believed to have been on the island at the time of the eruption. Emergency services say the number of people missing is in double digits. And most of the survivors who have been taken off the island are injured, and some have suffered serious burns. Now, hours after the eruption, police say they fear there will be more casualties. Uh, difficult conditions are complicating search and rescue efforts. Zooming, unfortunately, the number is um, likely to be higher as up to 27 people are still unaccounted for on White Island, New Zealand's uh, most active cone volcano after it erupted um, around Monday afternoon local time. Five people are now confirmed dead, one confirmed to be a young man from a town across the island. 23 have been rescued, including the five people killed. And we are just getting word now that the World Anti-Doping Agency has banned Russia from all major sporting events, including next year's Summer Olympic Games uh, in Tokyo. Members of the international body convened in Switzerland to hand out the four-year ban. They accused Russian administrators of manipulating doping records. A government-sponsored doping scheme was revealed five years ago. Russian athletes were barred from competing in Russian games. Uh, they have been banned from the Olympics and World Championships in a range uh, of sports. That, that decision coming from the World Doping Agency. that has taken storm across the internet. New video taken by a bystander showing two men climbing the newly replaced southern border fence. This video prompted some criticism, but soon after its release, the Border Patrol said the system worked exactly as designed. The National Border Patrol Council's Vice President and Border Patrol Agent Hector Garza joining us now. So, so it's very important for us to realize that these drug cartels will always try anything to continue their drug smuggling, their human trafficking, uh, their human smuggling. They'll always try something. So that's why it's so important for us as Border Patrol agents to be able to have those resources like physical barriers, uh, proper manpower. But let's talk about this, Leyland. This video shows that only one person made an illegal entry and not multiple people like we've seen in other other areas where we don't have walls. Now to the next phase in the impeachment showdown with House Democrats set to present evidence in their case against the president at a judiciary hearing tomorrow morning. Evidence they say shows a rock solid case, but Republicans aren't backing down. On the eve of historic impeachment hearings, Congress has been burning the midnight oil. We have to act now. You can't wait for the next election because he's trying to interfere with the next election. The House Judiciary Committee is now charged with drafting specific grounds to remove President Trump. The president leaves us no choice. Describing impeachment as the Constitution's final answer to a president who mistakes himself for a monarch, they plan to present evidence Trump acted in a way that betrays our national security and corrupts our elections using a foreign power. With Washington and Pyongyang exchanging heated rhetoric over the past week or so, U.S. President Donald Trump took to Twitter on Sunday, telling the regime's leader Kim Jong-un in no uncertain terms that he could lose everything if he continues to be hostile toward the United States. However, Trump also reiterated his commitment to continue diplomacy with the North Korean leader, saying Kim Jong-un is too smart to be rash with hostile acts. President Trump added Kim does not want to void his special relationship with him, nor does he want to interfere with the U.S. presidential election in late 2020. He went on to reiterate the tremendous economic potential North Korea has, but stressed the importance of denuclearizing the regime, just as Kim has promised.
Tonight, police in Arkansas are calling it an ambush and execution after an officer was shot and killed while sitting in his squad car. The horrifying scene unfolding right in the station parking lot late Saturday night. Police say 27-year-old Fayetteville officer Stephen Carr was waiting for his partner when the killer opened fire. Other officers hearing the shots then rushing out of the building and confronting the gunman chasing him into an alley where he was shot and killed. Tonight, police identifying the killer as 35-year-old London Phillips and are now searching his home for clues. Authorities say back in December, they received a call about the same suspect impersonating an officer. The two officers that shot the suspect have been placed on paid leave, which the department says is standard procedure while they investigate. Noura Arbid doesn't know exactly what happened to her husband after Israel arrested him in September. But two days after his arrest, he was taken to hospital with kidney failure and 11 broken ribs. His lawyers say Israel's security agency, the Shin Bet, severely tortured him. The Shin Bet told Al Jazeera that Samer said he didn't feel well during interrogation, so they transferred him to hospital but didn't give more details. Noura was only allowed to see him once, plugged to machines. Now she has more questions than answers. My daughter googled his name. She thinks we're hiding information from her. She asked me, what does it mean that my dad is in a critical condition? I told her these are all rumors and that he is strong. There was a market here in the southern Idlib village when the airstrikes began. They were Russian jets, according to the Syrian Observatory for Human Rights. Volunteer white helmet paramedics are there within minutes to do what they've done thousands of times during the civil war, try to save the lives of civilians. They must scrabble through the dirt by hand, using machinery could displace more rubble. Somehow, this man is still alive. Intensive airstrikes by jets targeted the main market. The airstrikes killed at least eight civilians and left dozens injured. As civil defense, we took out the bodies and helped the injured.